My name is Royal Brandon. As an air traffic controller, basically your job title is to safely get planes to their destination. There are three ways we do that, speed, heading, and altitude. There are three types of air traffic controllers. You've got a tower controller, terminal controller, and an en route controller. In the tower, you basically have four different sections there. Data control, clearance delivery, ground control, and local control. Data, you're getting all of the the, the, the flight data, basically. Um, let's say we're going from Oklahoma to Florida. You need to get all the data in route for the pilots. That's what data control is. When you have clearance control, they're basically getting the clearance to take off. Ground control, it's really like a highway, a highway on the ground. So let's say you're sitting in the tower, you're looking down, and what you wanna do is safely maneuver them to the runway or taxi them to the terminal safely, whether they're taking off or landing. Local control, when the plane takes off, they've got maybe 50 to 100 miles of airway that they are in charge of. Terminal is the next phase of air traffic control. Now that is gonna be a designated airspace where you're gonna go to your next destination, which is in route. In route is basically Let's say we are driving from, again, Oklahoma to Florida. While you're en route, you have to stay within the guidelines, whether it's speed, whether it's altitude, whether it's heading, anything can come up en route. So these planes, when you look up in the sky, they're not just doing what they want to do. They're getting handed off from whether it's tower, whether it's terminal, or whether it's en route, they're getting handed off to these different facilities. Typical work day for an in-route controller is when you come in, you get briefed on what's going on, you get briefed on what planes you have in your airspace, and from there, you, you sit and look at the radar and control the traffic. I would probably say tower. You can see out for obvious reasons. When you're in the tower, you get to look out. You basically get the entire landscape and layout of the airport. I worked at the Federal Aviation Administration, well, a lot of people call it FAA. I worked there for about seven to 10 years. And during that time, realized, you know what? I think this is something that I might want to do. In that seven to 10 years, I kind of got my feet wet a little bit with air traffic control. If you can, try to get a job as a pseudo pilot so you basically get to play air traffic controller. Um, maybe possibly work at an airport. Be around aviation would be my, my biggest thing. Kind of round yourself with aviation. One of my courses that I took in college was aircraft identification. You get a, a small introduction to aircraft ID. Anything related to aircraft, the airport, anything related to that, definitely take those courses. If you have the chance and the opportunity, tour an airport. We took a tour of LAX. Anything basically that you can get your feet wet doing, it will give you the opportunity to figure out if that's what you really want to do. I have a degree in aviation science. And with that degree, that's basically the prerequisite to becoming an air traffic controller. OU actually offers that program. I think, I think they are certified now. Well, with air traffic control, when we look up in the sky, you can basically say that's the highway for the airplanes. Most planes, now there's some, the reason why I say most planes, there's some that they get up and they fly for recreation and they, you know, they're getting flight hours. The pilots, they're getting flight out. When they take off, they come back to the same airport. But most planes have a destination that they're going to. So when we look in the sky, 
It's like a highway for the planes. In this example, let's say we have American 500 and we have Delta 400. Say American 500 is heading Northeast. So American 500 is going Northeast. So we have Delta 400 going Northwest. They're, they're on the same path, same speed, and same altitude. At some point, their path will intersect. And with their path intersecting, that's where the air traffic controller comes in. And we have to figure out a creative way to separate those aircraft. If, if they continue on that trajectory, it's gonna be a collision. But if we can separate them effectively, it's gonna make an X like that. Whether they, whether Delta 400 crosses over American 500 or whether American 500 crosses over Delta 400. For this example, we'll say Delta 400 descend and maintain 4,000. What I've told Delta 400 to do is descend and maintain 4,000. I'm also telling Delta 400 to slow down. And I tell Delta 400, Delta 400 descend and maintain 4,000, reduce speed to 230 knots. Well, I've instantly changed that trajectory and that path. They're still going to cross, but they're going to cross at a, at a safe distance. Let's say Delta 400 is coming into Will Rogers Airport. Terminal control just handed off Delta 400 to tower control. And Delta 400 is now in my airspace and I'm assigned Delta 400. Let's say Delta 400 is coming in what we call hot. Basically, Delta 400's rate of change, the speed is way too fast. I'm immediately gonna tell Delta 400 reduce speed to 230 knots. And let's say Delta 400, that's still not, it's still not good enough for me. What I would then tell Delta 400 to do is kind of maintain one zero thousand. Delta 400, go around. We're gonna put Delta 400 in a, what we call holding pattern. But basically the reason why I have to put Delta 400 in a holding pattern is because I may have Southwest 290 coming in. And after Southwest 290 comes in, I might have Jet Air 212 coming in. I, I have planes coming in and they're they're banking on Delta 400 landing safely. Now, like I talked about earlier, the domino effect, since I couldn't safely get Delta 400 on the ground, I now have to start talking to Terminal and letting them know, hey, maybe tell Enroute to slow these guys down coming in because I've kind of I've kind of created myself a problem because I couldn't get Delta 400 on the ground safely. Everything has to just fall in place. That's why you have delay. Everybody's job at the air, airport is important, especially when it comes to direct relation with the aircraft.